Welcome to Luxon Photography. In this video, we're going to take a look at the images from the camera, the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III. And we will take a look at these images in three ways. First, we will take a look at the images in Lightroom here as JPEG straight from the camera. Now, these are the JPEG files that the camera produced. And um, I think it's very interesting. And then we take a look at the raw files unedited and then the raw files edited, which I think is the most interesting. But, you know, there's a quality when you can get images who look nice straight out the camera. Now, getting nice images straight out the camera is a quality. And so I thought, let's start off with the JPEGs that came just f from this camera. So you see some in color, some in black and white, some have strong color, some have uh, nearly no color. Now, what does it mean? The camera, the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark III, um, has many picture styles, which means that the image that is uh, taken, the, the, the camera is going to process the image and it's going to process is according to the picture style you select. So here, for example, I select monotone or monochrome, which is the black and white file or style. So these images are black and white. This is not edited. This is straight from the camera, the JPEG file. I had two lenses, by the way, the 45 millimeter prime lens, f1.2, a really nice portrait lens, very nice to get blurry background, to get close to the people, to the subject, or if you photograph things, to get close to the things. And, and um, the kit lens, the zoom lens, the 14 to 42 millimeter lens, it starts at f3.5, which is very different from this f1.2. So this is nice to get blurry background, focus on one thing and blur everything, everything out. The zoom lens is nice if you want to see a little bit more where are we actually, how is the weather, more information. Because here you don't know where I am, you don't know the weather, you don't know the, the, the place where I am and you might want a picture like this, which you m cannot get with 45 millimeter. So uh, I was playing just around with these picture styles. So this was uh, a color picture style. Then I go to sepia. Um, and I think these images are totally usable. Uh, it's 60 megapixel sensor, which is not so much for today's standards, but the good thing is it will be faster to edit on your computer and you can still print it pretty large. I never actually got to print an image as large as it could have been printed. So, um, yeah, just look at this. This is straight from the camera, the JPEG. I can use this just as it is. Then I, the camera also has some fun picture styles. For example, vintage. There are different vintage styles. And just look at it. I think this is a very cool style and you can shoot a whole day with it and then have a, a series of your day all in the same colors, in the same style. This is a little bit more normal. This is very colorful. I think it's pop art. Uh, so I, for this, I think the image is way too uh, saturated. You know, none of these images are edited. It's straight from the camera. So this is actually a look that I don't like for this image. But if I go on for these images, I think the look fits really well. It's the same look. It's the pop art. It's very powerful, very set, much saturation. The colors are actually way too strong. But on these images, I think it looks really nice. I think it really works here. But doesn't work on all images. So, um, I have to tell you, I'm not the technical photographer, so I'm not going to talk so much about how many megapixels, how many SD cards do fit in there. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about technical stuff. You find that in nearly every review. I really want to show you images straight from the camera. How do images actually look like taken with this camera, with the kit lens that is with the camera for about 700 euros and with another prime lens. So uh, that's what I want to give you because that is what you not always find on the internet so much. You don't find so many reviews with many images. 
it's very easy to find reviews about technical stuff. It's not so easy to find reviews in which go into detail in the in the image quality. And we will do that when we go to the raw files. Now these are all unedited and you know we we can edit them as well. You know, look at this. This also looks nice. This is just the JPEG. I can then go to the next image, press previous, have then the same look on my image. And now the I find that the 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 kit lens, the 14 to 42 millimeter lens, you don't get so much blurry background. This is very difficult to get blurry background with this lens. This is a nice lens, you know, to capture, to document, documentary photography. So you photograph what you see, where you've been, holidays. That's really nice. To capture emotions, I find that the 45 millimeter worked really well. Now, what I really liked about this lens is that I can get really close. Look at this eye. It's it's really sharp um, and I'm standing really close. And what I in my experience I have lenses with which I cannot get that close to the person. It's it's nearly like a macro lens. I will make another video as well about uh, the camera its performance. Now for example there were times when the autofocus was not was not always on point. I find this is very sharp here this is not sharp and yeah here we got some sharpness so i think this image works now the key to an image is i think the emotion now for example this doesn't have nice emotion there's no joy in it there's no fun now and when we take a look at another image maybe like this much more fun much more joy it's the same lens it's the same place it's the same day it's nearly everything the same probably the same settings even but the image works because the content of the image what's in it has expression and that's what an image what a great image uh, makes if you want to take great images capture emotions now this is an image that I like the eyes but I would not use this image there's no joy in it it's a very skeptical look that my son has towards me and this camera this is not a nice image I think this is much more nicer it's he's laughing why because he's looking at his mother and so th that's a really great image and so this is not a nice I mean no, he also laughs at me <laughs> but here he doesn't so the key for me photographing people is always get emotions now i didn't photograph many people here i photographed more stuff things that came across me i got this camera and lens combination for three days by olympus uh, they rented out here in germany they have a, a, a service you could say where you can test their products now this is the JPEG. Now I think this image turned out really nice. Uh, no matter which lens I used. If I want a blurry background, it's the 45. Which is like a 90mm lens in terms of full frame. So you get really close. When you, f when you want everything sharp, then you choose the kid lens. Now this is the JPEG straight from the camera. Then comes the raw files unedited. These are the raw files unedited. And let me just go forward. I think maybe here um, what I think is uh, usually when I look at raw files the raw files miss a little bit of color don't have so much contrast they look unedited which they are when I look at these images here they they to me seem nearly uh, finished now I think the color here looks very strong but it's it's all uh, nothing is edited it's all uh, unedited and that, that was something very interesting because with the Canon cameras that I use often the raw file also looks nice but lacks a little bit of color and, and power. And I find that many of these images I can just keep, leave them as they are. This for example I could leave as it is. This for example I could leave as it is. Doesn't need any editing. This I could leave as, as it is. Here you see the flowers. 
I think they look really nice in the JPEG form where I had the strong picture style. And how the how you how good you can edit the raw files, we will take a look at in a moment when we get to the edited ones. I just wanted to skip through a little bit about how do the files look like in raw, which is the ORF format. I think it's Olympus raw file. Here we also got the images with, with our kit. Now in RAW, all images are in color. In JPEG, it's determined by the picture style how the images look like in terms of color, black and white, sepia. Okay, so these are the RAW files, just so you have an idea, uh, which I think look nearly finished. I think these images uh, look to me really uh, nearly finished I would not have to edit these images you you could leave it as it is now it might lack some character because um, it's like a, you, you could just maybe make a black and white off out of it just like this and now it's a fine image maybe make it a little bit more like this and you could hang it on a wall print it big And now let's take a look at the edited raw files. This is, I think, the most interesting thing. And we can also take a look at some technical stuff. Now, here I have the kit lens and I'm shooting at ISO 6400. Now, I thought when I looked at this, I thought, have I, have I put in some grain, which is here, Körnung in German, grain, because it's very, very noisy. The image looks really noisy. Usually you get this look when you add grain. When I do it very heavily, you see it. But I didn't. So this is this is the weakness of the camera system, Micro Four Thirds. It's not so great at high ISO. When you, you shoot a full frame camera, any Canon, any new Canon, any new Nikon, uh, ISO 6400 actually uh, will give you nice images. And uh, we have to be fair to say that when you use the noise reduction, which is, which is here, you know, a lot of the noise gets away, but you also lose sharpness. And it might even be the case that you don't even see where the focus point was, because now the eye is not so sharp anymore. So that's very, I think it's very interesting. If you shoot in very dark situations, like indoors events, for example, and you don't want to use flash, which I recommend to do, uh, to to use flash. But if you don't use flash, now that would be a might be a problem. But even though the images now have have grain here or noise, I think the noise looks really fine. I, I think it's not distracting. I think it adds some nostal nostalgia to the image, and I really like this image. This is the kit lens. It's not the expensive one. It's not the prime lens, it's the kit lens. And this image I really like. I could print this, could put some noise reduction in there, like this, and now it's totally fine. We still have some noise here and there, but it's, I think it's a really beautiful image because of the content of the image, not of the camera. So here we have still the kit lens. I wanted to see, when I go to really high ISO, ISO 6400 are the images usable and you see noise you see it's not totally sharp here some noise and it's not the sharpest lens I have to say I find it's not the sharpest lens it's it's a pancake lens which means that it's very small it's very lightweight it looks cool uh, it works really well and for walking around it's a really nice lens. Now, I usually don't do what I was doing today. I don't usually walk around town photographing stuff, cars, houses. That is not what I do. I photograph people. And for photographing people, I would not use I would not use the kit lens. I would but I would use the 45 1.2 lens often at 1.2. Now, this is an image that looks very similar to an image that I would have taken with my 
Canon camera. If I would be here today at the same place, take the image, the image might look, the, the, the end result would look very similar to these images. Even here with the blurry background, we get some nice blurry background at 45 at f1.6. Um, on a full frame camera, you you get more blurry background, but I think this this also this looks very professional. I'm not talking about me; I'm talking about the blurry background. So you can get a blurry background with this system using some prime lenses, uh, which are there. So the Micro Four Thirds system is very big. There are many lenses that you can use. You don't have to use Olympus lenses. There are Panasonic lenses and other lenses that you can use and they fit. Now, how have I edited these images? I put one preset over one image and then copied it to all other images. So all images actually are, are from one edit. And then I haven't done much because I took these images today and so it's there is no client, it's just for me. So there is uh, speed is important when I do things that are free. Now, I think that when you photograph people and faces, uh, color is very important to, to get the fa facial color right. Now, when you photograph nature and stuff like buildings or cars, color is very, very subjective and everything is possible. Everything is allowed. Here, for example, this is the unedited image and this is the image how I have it. And it's very red too too much red in it but it's the way that i like it it's the way that i chose you can edit an image in many different ways and this time i chose uh, to put in much red tone okay this was it from the park as i said it's a 16 megapixel sensor this is i think a really nice image i'm not so sure about the oh, go, go. These, uh, the, the, with this uh, zoom lens, I think it, it doesn't look so sharp, and I don't know. I don't really know why, because it's f9. It should be really sharp. I think it's it's okay, but for a one for 100 percent view, I think it's 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 not looking so nice. So this zoom lens has its weaknesses. It's definitely not not as sharp as the as the uh, 40 40 something millimeter lens, and now these images remind me very much of my Canon camera because I took images like this days ago with my Canon gear and this image looks very similar. So now with the Canon full frame camera I get more blurry background with the lenses I got. 50mm 1.2, 85mm 1.2. But I think all these images that I've taken and that I've edited very quickly I'm really happy with the look of these images. I'm really happy with how I got there, which, by which I mean, how does it feel to shoot the camera? This is not going to be a review. This is more how do the images look like, unedited, as JPEG, raw. How do the images look like when I edit them quickly? This is what you get out of it. This is what it's before. It's not much difference. You see, it's much more red here. The sky looks nearly the same. So it's actually not much difference. And here we got the baby images edited. And I really like the look. Now the look is the editing and I can, my experience, now some time ago I took some images with my Canon gear and with the Hasselblad camera. The Hasselblad camera did cost when it came out $32,000. The images after I edited them looked nearly the same. And so I feel this is tr this is true with this camera as well. With this lens, these images, they look like a full frame camera image, but they're not there from the Olympus uh, for Micro Four Third camera. So I think when you have a prime lens, which goes wide open to f1 point something or f2 point something, I think you with any camera, you get some nice images. And when you edit them the same way as you always edit, the images might look very similar to the images that you took weeks before, month before. So, for example, these car images. 
I took some images in Hamburg with my Canon gear with the 85 1.2 and this image looks very similar to the images that I took with the Canon gear. So if I would not know that this is an Olympus camera, I would have said this looks like an 85 Canon, Nikon, Sony full frame image. This is just a, this is a free talk. I give you my experience with the camera and with editing the images from today. Um, I wanted to be honest, to be real, to be in the moment. And um, here we got the kit lens again, ISO 800. And I really like these images. The look is really nice. Working with the camera was, was really, really nice. And I really li like that the camera is uh, quite um, cheap. Now, the lens that I use, the um, 45 millimeter lens, is not a cheap lens. But the camera with the kit lens, this lens costs, I think, 700 euros, maybe a little bit less, new. And it's a really nice price for a camera and a lens combination. Now, what's interesting is also, let's take a look at how, we, how good can we edit the images. Now, when we take a look at this, at, let me take, at this part here. Now this is nearly totally dark here and here. And it's always interesting to see how far can we push the shadows, for example. Here are the shadows. Shadows are up until the edge. And I think there is noise. You see the noise pattern here, but it looks really natural. Here you don't really see much noise here, yes. And uh, I can put the noise reduction in and then it looks really clean. And you see before and after how much you can push actually the files. It's also very, this is important. If you are somebody who photographs nature and you have dark parts, you want to brighten them up. These trees here, they don't look nice so uh, dark. You want them to be seen green, not black. So it's important to see how well does this camera actually edit Images, how good can I push the, the blacks, the whites, the shadows, the highlights? Uh, how good can I push this camera? This is actually the dynamic range. When people talk about how good can I edit the blacks, the whites, the highs, the lows, it's, a, it's the dynamic range. And you, you see the difference here in image, is it's, the difference is not so much. The blue is a little bit different, the green and the yellow is a little bit different. But actually the image looks similar than before. When I go back and just do a little bit here and maybe a little bit there. And you get a very similar look just from scratch. And this could be done, this is finished. And it's very easy. Very easy shot, very easy edited. And I've had a really great time with this camera, the OMD EM10 Mark III. Will I buy it? I don't know. I have already too many cameras, I feel. Um, I shoot a lot, but I had the Fuji camera, two Fuji cameras actually, and I found because I was lacking lenses, I only had one lens, I was not using it for professional uh, purposes. Whenever I had something important to shoot, I used the Canon because I have the range from uh, 16 millimeter in full frame to 135 millimeter. And so everything is covered. On the Fuji, I had one lens and that was uh, not enough for a wedding, portrait shoot, whatever. But it was f fun for, for, you know, for what I did today. I just walked out, photographed stuff. And um, you can do this with any camera. When you photograph professionally on events, on weddings, whatever, the camera has to be durable. The lenses has to be have to be durable. ISO is important, dynamic range. How many megapixels do you need? Um, and so there are many questions to ask. Uh, and you can you can choose your camera very seriously but just from the experience that i've had today i think the omd em5 no em10 mark 3 is a really nice camera um just let the images uh, speak to you it's not uh, i don't want to talk you into something um i don't even have the camera i just had it for a weekend and this is just a, an experience 
And I think it's always nice to test new gear. You never know where it will bring you. Maybe you change systems. Maybe you add something to your gear. Um, I never tried the Micro Four Thirds system before. Usually when you ask me about photography, sensor sizes, a small sensor is nice when you want everything sharp. For example, street photography. You photograph something on the street, people walking by. Then you might want everything sharp. Um, or you do portraiture. You want dreamy images. Then you would rather go for a bigger sensor because you can more easily get a blurry background. Now with this system you also get a blurry background but it's very pricey. This lens costs 1200 euros and in full frame terms it behaves like a 90mm f2.4. Now not from the light that's coming in the lens. It's an f1.2 lens but the bokeh is like a f2.4 lens 90mm on a full frame camera. So it's, it's more expensive on the system to get a blurry background. On the full frame camera, an f1.8 lens is fine, f1.4 lens is really, really fine, and you get more blurry background than with these 1.2 lenses. Just, uh, just to let you know. Yeah, that was it. It's late already, midnight. Uh, it was a long day, many images, and I, I just did this video to to really give you an insight about the images that this camera produced, not about the technical stuff. Uh, you will find so many reviews where people photograph the camera, but they will not show many images taken with it. So I only give you my experience with it, not the technical stuff. Take the technical stuff from the technical guys, get the emotion from people like me. That's it. <laughs>